Hop, pop. We like to hop. We like to hop on top of pop. Stop! You must not hop on pop. Hi friends, I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week I'm going to talk about sight reading, well, rhythm, sight reading together. This stems from uh, one of my viewers left a comment saying that their issue seems to be rhythm and reading music. Now this is a huge topic. I talked about this in another video I did about uh, learning online versus learning with a teacher. It's, it's a hard thing to address unless you're one-on-one -on -one with the person and <laughs> to diagnose what the actual issue is. But rhythm and sight reading, they go hand in hand. So I'll, I'll do an overview the best I can and, and hopefully it'll address some of the issues. And uh, so what can I say? I guess the big thing that I want to start by saying is that so many people, I think, when it comes to music, they have such a hard time wrapping their heads around the fact that music is a language. It's like they, they refuse to believe it. But quite literally, it's a language, just like English, French, Russian, Polish, whatever, Italian. You know, so you have to remember when you're approaching an instrument or approaching music, you, you have to remember what it was like when you were a kid learning to read, or if that was too long ago, your children, grandchildren, nieces or nephews, and like, think about it. How long did it take to learn the ABCs, right? Just to learn it and, and, and sing the song that we, the way we do it to the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star melody, right? And then from there to actually be able to recognize, well, that's an A, that's a Y, that's a Z, that's a T, right? That, forever and then you have uppercase and lowercase and, and cursive and then understanding the exceptions right what sounds do they make C can go k or s or ch there's all of that and it takes it, it takes like years until you finally get to the point where you can actually begin to start reading like reading <laughs> reading in any real sense right and then we don't throw a kid Tolstoy or Dostoevsky or whatever Salman Rushdie you know we, th we, we do you know the cat is red, the cat in bed, right? And even at that, it's like pulling teeth, the c c cat, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So it's the same thing with music. And with music, there's two aspects to reading it. You have the rhythmic aspect and you have the dots, okay? And if we're actually gonna read music in any way, like, you know, be able to play along with other musicians and, and read it in real time, we have to have those things together as if they're second nature, right? We have to, know the rhythm's cold, and we have to know the dots on the page, right? If we're looking and it's like, is that a C or an A or a B? Okay, then you're not ready to sight read or, you know, you know what I mean, right? It's like we have to have that cold. There's no question, right? Because otherwise you're not reading, you're practicing, you're learning. So that being said, um, it really goes to what level you're at, so it's a, it's a hard topic to discuss because what if, if you're a beginner, right, then you still have to do that groundwork and it might be rhythmic. Um, so, and that, that in itself is reading. So we have books like this. That's just a book that focuses on rhythm or you can download things like that, you know? And it might be, okay, it might be you have to start out with the very basic thing. So like whole notes and half notes. And once that's comfortable, quarter notes then maybe eighth notes. You know, you're certainly not going to be starting out with syncopations or stuff on the off beats, right? You'll get there. It's going to take time and patience. But, you know, you might get a book like this where it's really simple and just sing them or tap them, you know? If that's getting easy, then, you know, tap, tap the 4-4 four, four time. And then with the other hand, the rhythm you're seeing. Right? That's a really good exercise, a really good way to start internalizing the rhythms. The other thing about rhythm, depending on the style of music, you have different you know, idiomatic rhythms. So if you're playing swing, there's certain rhythms that come up all the time, funk, rock, whatever it is. Right? If you're playing funk music, then you're going to have to get comfortable reading 16th notes, right? Da-da, uh, uh, da-da. Da -da, uh, 
whatever, you get the idea. Um, you know, and I had a great band director when I was a kid, and, and he made sure like every semester, whatever music we had, there was a variety. There was something Latin, there was something swing, there was like a march, there was a funk, right? And he would go through, and before we even touched the music, he would isolate the rhythms, write them out, and as a band, we would clap them together or sing them until we were comfortable with it, because then later we're going to look at the music and we're going to put the notes to it, etc. So there's, there's a lot of levels to it. And then with the viewer, whatever the rhythmic problem is, it's hard to say, and there's different ways to approach things, you know, and there's different kind of rhythmic problems people have. But I would say if you don't get discouraged, because we all have some sort of rhythm, right? Uh, we all have some sort of internal rhythm that we can refer to, that we can bring in to help us with our music, whether it's our heartbeat, the rhythm when we speak, the rhythm when we walk down the street. There's, there's different ways we can access or come about these problems to, to, to resolve them musically. Um, but OK, so <laughs> we need to get the rhythms cold if we're going to be reading music. So if notes are the issue, then maybe, you know, print out a sheet of music every day and as quickly as you can write over top, you know, and, and, try, and try and keep going. Don't stop. Maybe you'll make mistakes, but, and then go back and look at it, you know, and, and, and train yourself to recognize those dots, what they are, so that, so that they do become second nature and you don't have to think about it. And then we can really approach reading. I mean, that, that's the thing, is if we're actually going to read music and try and do it in, in real time, we have to be working within our skill set, within our ability. So if you're starting out, maybe you only know the notes of C major, that's fine. Maybe you only know very simple rhythms, that's fine. You might be only working at the sight reading four bars at a time, eight bars at a time. Certainly not a whole piece of music, right? So I guess we have to give ourselves ex accept the fact that this is a process. It's going to take a long time. That's, that's key, and that we have to work within our own abilities. Now again, working within our abilities when we're reading music, right? It has to be stuff that we can execute. If it's too difficult for us, then we don't have a, a hope of, of reading it in real time, right? So when we're practicing our reading, it has to be stuff that you know, we can do fairly easily, right? Something your teacher gives you, within two days you can play it perfectly. That's something that you should work on reading, because if it's, if it's too difficult, then you're just practicing technique, right? You know, so I'm, I'm an amateur piano player, right? So I have a book like this, Easy Classics to Moderns, you know? And when I'm working on my sight reading, I do it with stuff like this. So it's like the, the right hand and the left hand aren't super involved. The rhythms aren't super difficult. I have a fighting chance of going from beginning to end if I do it at a slow enough tempo and getting it right. Um, you know, and then... <sighs> You know, and then sure, then I'll, I'll, I'll practice Chopin or Beethoven or Bach and, and spend my time learning that. But I'm certainly not reading that. That's like a super advanced, even, even a super advanced player has a difficult reading some of that music, right? So we have, to, we have to be approaching stuff that we can literally handle and grasp. Otherwise, we're not reading, we're, we're practicing. All right, so when it comes to sight reading and practicing sight reading, I think there, there's four tips that I would like to share with you. So one we talked about already, it's we got to choose music that's within the realm of possibility that we can actually play it at sight, going from beginning to end, okay? That's super important. The second thing is we have to do it every day. As with anything else, we have to make it part of our daily practice because it's only going to get better by doing it consistently every day. Simple as that. If you only have five minutes, great. If you have 20 minutes, better. Doesn't matter as long as you're doing it every day because it's a skill we need to build on. Third thing, and this is this is key. Okay, you have to practice reading with the metronome, and the key thing is finding the correct tempo. Okay, so if it's too fast for you, and you're making mistakes half the time, then you're not you're not doing yourself any favors. You're working against yourself. If you do it too slowly, whereas you're getting 90 to 100% of it right on the first go, then you're not really working on reading. You're not pushing yourself. Okay, that's you're able to do it. So the key is you're going to do it with a metronome, and you're going to find a tempo where you're playing about 75 to 80% of the music correctly, right? And the rest is going to be mistakes. 
and that's the sweet spot, right? Um, so that you're always on edge, pushing yourself in the actual reading, working at looking ahead at the music and, and getting things correct. So you want to be 75 to 80% correct is the sweet spot when you're practicing. Any more mistakes than that, you're not helping yourself any less than that, well, then you're not working on the reading aspect. Okay, so music that's within your reach, doing it daily, doing it with a metronome at the correct tempo. Number four, the last thing, super, super important, is that you keep going. So that's why it's important we have the metronome. You're reading, if you make a mistake, you do not stop, you keep going. And this is so difficult for us because our natural tendency is to make a mistake, stop, go back. Or make a mistake, slow it down, and then keep going. But in the real world, you're playing with a band, it doesn't stop. And if you make a mistake, that's fine, but the music doesn't stop. You have to come back in with everyone else in the right place. So you have to work on your sight reading, you're going along, you flub it, that's fine. If you keep flubbing it, it's fine, but you're still going, moving forward with the music, and when you do get back into your rhythm or, or executing it properly, you're in the right place, right? The time doesn't stop. It keeps going forward, and so do your eyes, and if you make a mistake, you keep going and you leave the rest behind. And that's super, super key. It's, it's counter to what our natural instincts are, but that's, that's one of the most important things, right? So music that you can execute, playing with a metronome every day at the right tempo, and never, 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 never stop. And then so whatever material you're going to use, you know, you want it to be, it's got to be fresh. You don't want to be, if, you, if you're playing it too many times, then you're starting to practice it, right? We, we all hear that. So, you know, I used to take things like, like bop duets, or I would take the Omni book, and I'd start at the beginning, and, and I'd do one or two a day. And then by the time I got to the end, I'd come back to the beginning, it was almost like reading it again. It was almost like I hadn't seen it because it was so long ago. So... That's one way you can approach it. There's an endless supply of sheet music online that you can use for your reading practice. But those are the things. The very last thing I'm going to say about sight reading isn't so much about practicing, but it's like getting in the practice or habit of doing, right? So when I sit down with a band for the first time and I'm reading music, before I even think about putting the horn in my mouth and approaching the music, I'm scanning the pages that are in front of me. So the first thing I'm looking at is, okay, what is the tempo and what is the style marking? Okay, the next is what is the key signature? So I'm noting that in my head. I'm looking, scanning the page. Is there a change of key? You know, if so, I'm making a mental note or I'll take a pencil and I'll circle it so that I know it's coming. I don't, it doesn't take me by surprise. Same thing for tempo changes. Is there a RAL or is there an accelerando or is there like a metric modulation? Does it go to half time? Does it go to double time? Double time feel, you know, and if I need to, I'll circle it. Again, so it doesn't take me by surprise. And then I'm looking for all the repeats. And if there's a repeat, does it repeat once or three times or five times? Do I play the first time only? Do I play times one, three, and five, right? There's things like that. Is there a DSL coda? If so, maybe I'll circle that. Are there two codas? Is it uh, de capo al fine? Taking note of all these things. Sometimes in some styles of music, right, you get to the end and you DS back to the top, then do you play all the repeats again or you just play them one time? So I'm taking note of all those things. I'm marking the music accordingly so that I have the best fighting chance of getting through it when I'm, and I'm just focusing on rhythms and notes and getting through it and then, and then you know, I know a key change is coming, okay, great. So that's a really good habit to get into, scan the music, take note of the little tricky spots, circle them, and it gives you a fighting chance of getting through it. I'm the Saxophone Oracle. So sight reading, rhythm, that's what I wanted to talk today. Thank you so much to the viewer for the, the great suggestion. Uh, you know, if anyone else has questions or comments, please send them my way. I'd love to address them in any future videos. As always, I hope this information is useful, it's helpful. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends. Um, thank you, as always, for continuing to watch. I'm the Saxophone Oracle. I wish you a great week. Happy practicing. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.